today, Kushku and I are going to read the 16th discourse of the Bhagavad Gita. This, in one translation, this discourse is uh, called uh, The Divine and Demonic Civilizations. And in another translation, it's called The Yoga of Discriminative Wisdom Concerning Divine and Demonic Qualities. Okay. So that's a difference in perspective. Slokes one through three. Abhaya sattva samshuddhi jnana yoga vya vasthitihi dana damascha yagnascha cha svadhyayas tapa arjavama ahinsa sat भवन्ति संपदः देवी the 16th discourse, and I'm reading from uh, the Bhagavad Gita, translated by Laurie Patton, the president of Middlebury College. I'm reading from the Light Illuminations Bhagavad Gita, uh, translated by Sri Purohit Swami, annotated by Kendra Cross and Barrows. And I'm reading from uh, Bhagavad Gita uh, by R.K. Sharma, translated by R.K. Sharma with Carol Pitts and Les Morgan. The patent reads, the Blessed One said, purity and truth being without fear, abiding in the yoga of wisdom, sacrifice, self-control and charity, the right path, heated discipline and the study of the Vedas absence of harm, truthfulness, absence of anger, renunciation and peace, avoidance of slander, compassion for beings, freedom from lust, kindness, modesty, and discretion, son of Bharata, energy, patience, courage, and purity, absence of hatred, moderation in honor. These are the traits of this born to the divine condition. Prose reads, Lord Sri Krishna continued, Fearness, fearlessness, clean living, unceasing concentration on wisdom, readiness to give self-control, I'm sorry, readiness to give self-control a spirit of sacrifice, regular study of the scriptures, austerities, candor, harmlessness, truth, absence of wrath, renunciation, contentment, straightforwardness, compassion toward all, covetousness, courtesy, modesty, and constancy, valor, forgiveness, fortitude, purity, freedom from hate and vanity, these are his who possesses the godly qualities, O Arjuna. And there's five different footnotes with these three verses, so I will read them. One, clean living. This phrase has always been translated as purity of being, purity of heart, and purification of essence. Two, candor, arjava, honesty, sincerity, and uprightness. Ramanuja defines uprightness as oneness of thought, word, and deed in one's dealing with others. Honesty about oneself, not pretending to be what one is not, is especially important. As Mayor Baba explains, infinite honesty is one of the aspects of God and therefore the least hypocrisy in ourselves keeps us aloof from God. Three, harmlessness, ahimsa, nonviolence. 
pure nonviolence is the ideal, but many commentators acknowledge that there are exceptions. As noted by Gandhi, Ahimsa also embraces violence deliberately committed out of compassion. This would include violence in defense of the innocent. The war that is the setting for the Gita is considered a just war necessary to overcome evil forces and uphold the Dharma. Four, straightforwardness, a paishuna, also translated as non-slanderousness, aversion to fault finding, an unmalicious tongue and no backbiting. Meyer Baba identifies backbiting as a disastrous habit because it causes us to take on the bad impressions, samskaras, of those we are criticizing. A true devotee, like a bee, sips the honey of good qualities from the hearts of his companions, according to Yogananda. Five, valor, tejas, fire also translated as radiance of character, energy, brilliance, or vigor. That was the prose version. The Sharma reads, fearlessness, the Lord, the blessed Lord said, fearlessness, mental purity, well-established in knowledge and yoga, generosity, self-control, performance of sacrifices, Without attachment, chanting spiritual scriptures, practice of austerities and straightforwardness, nonviolence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, relinquishment, a peaceful dis disposition, non backbiting, compassion to all beings, freedom from greed, gentleness, ability to feel shame, freedom from fickleness, resplendence, forgiveness fortitude, purity, freedom from hatred and excessive vanity. These are the characteristics of a person endowed with the divine quality, O descendant of Bharata. Slope four. Dambho, that po dami ma nakchado krodha, Parushya me vacha Agyana Chabhi jatasya Partha Samparda Mansu Surima. Slope four. The patent reads Son of Prita, fraud, insolence, and hostile conceit, anger, rough speech, too, and ignorance. These are the traits of those born to the demonic condition. The prose reads, hypocrisy, pride, insolence, cruelty, ignorance belong to him who is born of the godless qualities. The Sharma reads, hypocrisy, arrogance, conceit, Anger, rudeness, and also ignorance are the characteristics of a person endowed with the demonic quality, O son of Prita. Slok 5. Devi, Sampadi Mokshaya, Nibandhaya Suri, Mata, Ma, Suchaha, Sampada, Devi Ma, Mi Jatodasi, Pandava. Slok 5. The divine condition leads to freedom, and the demonic condition leads to bondage. Do not be sorrowful. You are born to the divine condition, son of Pandu. The prose reads, godly, qual godly qualities lead to liberation, godless to bondage. Do not be anxious, prince. You are the godly qualities. And the Sharma reads, the divine quality is considered conducive to liberation, the demonic quality to bondage. Don't worry, O son of Pandu, you are endowed with the divine quality. Slok 6.
द्रौ भूत सर्गो लोके दीनवेव आसुर एव च देवो विस्तरशः पोतक असुर पार्थ मे क्षुणु श्लोक सिक्स The pattern reads In this realm there are created two kinds of beings divine and demonic the divine has been told in detail now hear from me the demonic son of preetha prose reads all beings are of two classes godly and godless the godly i have described I will now describe the others. The Sharma reads, these are two types of created beings, or I'm sorry, there are two types of created beings in this world, the divine and also the demonic. The divine has been described extensively, O son of Preeta. Hear from me about the demonic. Slok 7. प्रवृत्ति च निवृत्ति च जना न विदु विदुरासुरा न शौच नापी चाचारो न सत्य तेषु विधते असत्यम प्रतिष्ठ ते जगदाहुर निश्वरम अपरस्पर भूता किम नय तका महेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुकामेतुक
I can't help myself thinking that um, this last three slokas were it's it was like Lord Krishna validating what Freud was trying to explain. <laughs> <laughs> and what we are seeing acted out on our television set every day. Thank God I don't have television. <laughs> <laughs> okay, slope 10. Kama Mashritya Dushpura Dambha Manama Da Nivataha Mohada Gruhitva Dasya Daha Naprava Tante Dashu Chitrataha Slok 10 Dependent on desire, which is hard to satisfy, steeped in fraud, pride, and drunkenness, they have grasped false ideas through confusion and move ahead with impure vows. That was the pattern. The prose reads, giving themselves up to insatiable passions, hypocritical, self-sufficient and arrogant, cherishing false conceptions founded on delusion. They work only to carry out their own unholy purposes. Sharma reads, after giving themselves up to insatiable desires filled with hypocrisy, pride and arrogance, and holding false notions due to delusion, they act with impure determination. Slokes 11 and 12, just a moment. Slokes 11 and 12 are together. Chinta mapari meya cha pralayanta mupa shritaha. Kamo Pamo Gaparama Etava Ditti Nishitaha Asha Pasha Shateva Dyaha Kama Krodha Parayana Ihante Kama Bhoga Bhogartha Manyayena Tharsar Varjayana Slug eleven and twelve. With the pattern reads, with no end of anxious thoughts clinging to an end which is dis dissolution, their highest goal is the enjoyment of desire without a doubt of their truth. They are bound by a hundred snares of hope. Their highest goals are anger and desire. They seek hordes of wealth in mistaken ways for the enjoyment of desire. The prose reads, Pouring anxiously over evil resolutions, which only end in death, seeking only the gratification of desire as the highest goal, seeing nothing beyond, caught in the toils of a hundred vain hopes, the slaves of passion and of wrath, they accumulate hordes of unjust wealth, only to pander to their sensual desire. And the Sharma reads, and attached to an infinite number of worries which continue until death, solely engrossed in the fulfillment of desires and pleasures, convinced that this universe is just this much which can be seen and nothing beyond, bound by hundreds of snares of hopes, filled with desire and anger, they wish to accumulate wealth by unjust means for the gratification of desires. Slokes 13 through 16 are together. Right. 13 through 16 are together. Ida madha maya labdhami prapasse manorathama ida masti damapi me bhavishyati Puna Dharnama Asso Maya Hataha Kshatru Hanish Yachaye Chaparanapi Ishwaro 
दहा महा भोगी सिद्धो हला बलवान सुखी अश्योद भीच व भिजन वा नस्मी कोदन्यो दस्ती सदस्यो मया यक्षये दासमाई मोदिष्य इत्य ज्ञान विमोहिता सो इट्स थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन एंड सिक्सटीन राइट यस अनेक चित्त विभांता मोह जाल समावृता प्रशक्त का काम भोषे भोगेशु पतंती नरके दशुचो Slug 16. Slugs 13 through 16. The patent reads, This has been gained by me today, and I will get this desire a desire which carries the mind like a chariot. This wealth is also mine, and so will this be mine. This enemy has been struck down by me, and I will strike others too. I am the Lord, the one who enjoys, fulfilled, strong, and happy. I am rich and well-born. Who else is there like me? I will sacrifice. I will give. I will be joyful. Thus say those confused by ignorance. Wandering away with many thoughts, they are covered by a net of confusion. Clinging to the enjoyment of desire, they fall into an impure hell. The prose reads, this have I gained today. Tomorrow I will gratify another desire. This wealth is mine now. The rest shall be mine ere long. I have slain one enemy. I will slay the others also. I am worthy to enjoy. I am the Almighty. I am perfect, powerful, and happy. I am rich. I am well-bred. Who is there to compare with me? I will, I will sacrifice, I will give, I will pay, and I will enjoy. Thus blinded by ignorance, perplexed by discordant thoughts, entangled in the snares of desire, infatuated by passion, they sink into the horrors of hell. The Sharma reads, this is gained by me today. This thing I desire, I will take. This is mine. Even this other property will be mine also. That enemy has been killed by me, and I will kill others as well. I am the supreme master. I am the enjoyer. I am successful. I am strong and happy. I am wealthy, born in a high-class family. Who else is equal to me? I will perform sacrifice, I will donate, I will enjoy. Thus those, del thus those deluded by ignorance, who's bewildered with many thoughts, those bewildered by many thoughts, caught, with, with, caught within snares of delusion, addicted to enjoyment and, and desires, fall into a foul hell. Slope 7. Slug 17. 70 to 20 are together. Okay. Okay. Atma Sambhavitaha Stabdha Thana Mana Mada Nivitaha Yajante Nama Yagestate Dambhena vidhi purvakama ehankara bala darpa kama krodha cha sanshritaha mamatma paradeheshu pratishtnano dambha shuyakaha tanaha vid tanaha dishitaha Kruran Sansharishu Naradhamana Kshipamya Jastra Masubhana Surishveva 
योनिशु आसुरी योनिमा पन्ना मुधा जन्मने जन्मने माम प्रायव कौंतेय ततो यांतय धमा गमे गतिमा श्लोक 17 टू 20 the pattern reads, immovable, self-absorbed, accompanied by lust, pride and wealth, they sacrifice in name only, fraudulently and without Vedic rules. They cling to anger and desire, arrogance and force, and eye-making. Those who grumble in this way hate me, whether in their own or another's body. In cycles of rebirth, over and over, I throw the impure, wretched people, cruel and filled with hate, into the wombs of demons. Son of Kunti, when they have entered the demon womb, they are deluded, birth after birth. They do not reach me, and then they travel to the lowest, on the lowest way. Rose reads, perplexed by discordant thoughts, entangled in the snares of desire, infatuated by passion, they sink into the horrors of hell. Self-conceited, stubborn, rich, proud, and insolent, they make a display of their patronage, disregarding the rules of decency. Puffed up by power and inordinate conceit, swayed by lust and wrath, these wicked people hate me, who am, who am within them, as I am within all. Those who thus hate me, who are cruel, the dregs of mankind, I condemn them to a continuous, miserable, and godless rebirth. So reborn, they spend life after life enveloped in delusion, and they never reach me, O oh prince. But then... It, but degenerate into still lower forms of life. And there is a footnote. According to several commentators, this verse, the, this verse does not imply that any soul is ever eternally damned. Shankara says that it means simply that those who fail to follow the way taught by Krishna will inevitably suffer not as punishment for failing to follow his way, but because his way means release from suffering. As Aurobindo writes, all souls are eternal portions of the divine, the Ashura as well as the Deva. All can come to salvation, even the greatest sinner can turn to the divine. And there's another footnote. It must be taught that the Lord has created some persons with evil tendencies in order to punish them. He is impartial without any attachment or hatred for any created being. Only those whose sins, the result of their own evil action, have been destroyed feel his attraction. Only those whose sins the result of their own evil action have been destroyed, feel his attraction. As a magnet exercises uniform attraction, he attracts all beings to himself. When the dirt of wickedness covering our soul is washed away by the tears of divine love, we become united with the Lord. Every soul will eventually realize God. And that was according to Swami Nikola, Swami Nikola Nanda. And the Sharma reads, self-centered, obstinate, full of vanity and lust for wealth, they make sacrifices in name only, hypocritical without regard to prescribed procedure, clinging to ego, power, arrogance, lust, and anger. Malicious people hate me in their own bodies, and in those of others. These habitual haters, cruel ones, the worst among humans in the cycles of existence, 
I perpetually cast these evil ones into the wombs of only demonic species. Subject to, subjected to demonic line of birth, these ignorant ones, while taking birth after birth, still do not attain me, O son of Kunti. Thereafter, they go to, the low, to a lower state. Slope 21. Trividha Naraka Shedra Dwaraha Nashana Matmanaha Kama Kro Krothas Tatha Lobhasta Sma Deta Tratye Tya Jeta Slope 21. The pattern reads This is the threefold gate of hell which destroys the self. Therefore, one should let go the threefold group of greed, anger, and desire. The prose reads, the gates of hell are three, lust, wrath, and avarice. They destroy the self, avoid them. And there's a footnote. There are two footnotes. Lust, kama, means desire for any object, for sensual pleasure, or for pleasurable experiences generally. Lust, greed, and anger, respectively, have body, heart, and mind as their vehicles of expression. Meyer Baba said that. Yogananda points out that greed, lust, and anger are associated with the three lower chakras. How to avoid them? When you have thoughts of anger, lust, or greed, do not worry about them and do not try to check them. Let all such thoughts come and go without putting them into action. Try to think counter thoughts in order to discern, to discriminate, to learn, and above all, to unlearn actions which are prompted by your impressions, according to Meyer Baba. And the Sharma reads, there is, a three there is a threefold gateway to hell that is the destroyer of self, desire, anger, and greed. Therefore, one should, relin one should relinquish this triad. Slope 22. Ate. Vikshuktakaha Konteya Tamodrare Stri Mirnaraha Acharatyatmana Kshreyastato Yati Para Gatima Slope 22. Son of Kunti, when one is freed from the three gates of dark, Thomas, one proceeds in the best way for the self, thus one goes on the highest way. That is the patent. Patent. These are the gates which lead to darkness. If a man avoids them, he will ensure his own welfare and in the end will attain his liberation. That was the prose. The Sharma reads, O son of Kunti, a person free from these three gateways to darkness acts in a way that is bene beneficial to oneself. Thereby, one attains the supreme state. Slope 23. Yaha Shastra Vidhi Mrutsujyaha Vartate Kamakarataha Na Sa Siddhi mava pronti na sukha na para gatima. Slope 23. The pattern reads, the one, who lets one, the one who lets go of the rule of Vedic law and exists according to his own desires reaches neither fulfillment nor happiness nor the highest way. 
prose reads, but he who neglects the commands of the scriptures and follows the promptings of passion, he does not attain perfection, happiness, or the final goal. And the Sharma reads, one who de deviating from scriptural prescription acts according to his own desires, attains neither great accomplishment nor happiness nor the supreme state. Slope 24. Tasman Chastrana Pramanaha Te Karya Karya Vyavasthito Gyatva Shastra Vidhano Takaha Karma Kartu Miha Harshi Slope 24. The pattern reads, thus following Vedic law, which focuses on that to be done and not to be done, and knowing Vedic law, you should perform action here in this world. The prose reads, therefore, whenever there is doubt whether you should do a thing or not, let the scriptures guide your conduct. In the light of the scriptures should your labor and the whole of your life. In the light of the scriptures should you labor the whole of your life. And there's a footnote. The intention of this verse is to tell us not to look upon ourselves as an authority. That, that is, not to be guided by our wishes and feelings. Here, Sri Krishna refers to the struggle in us between divine and demonic impulses. So long as we are in that condition, we should be guided by the authority of the Shastras, scriptures, according to Gandhi. Once one has mastered the desire nature through self-control, one is ready for a freer, intelligent self-guidance, and then for the highest supreme law and supreme liberty of the spiritual nature according to Aurobindo. And there's a further footnote. Do you know the use of the scriptures? A man once wrote a letter to a relative asking him to send five seers, roughly kilograms of sweetmeats and a piece of cloth. The relative received the letter, read it, and remembered about the sweetmeats and the cloth. Then he threw the letter away. Of what further use was it? Ramakrishna. And the Sharma reads, and the Sharma and the Sharma reads for slope 24 and the Kalafan. Therefore, in determining what to do and what not to do, the scripture is the authoritative guide for you. After knowing what is stated in the scriptural rules, you should do your work in this world accordingly. And the telephone reads, here ends the 16th chapter named the yoga of discrimination, I'm sorry, the yoga of discriminative wisdom concerning divine and demonic qualities in the Upanishad sung by Lord Sri Krishna in the dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna in the scripture of yoga pertaining to knowledge about Brahman. That is the end of Discourse 16. So the next time, Kushbu will read, Kushbu and I will read Discourse 17. We have only two more to go. Discourse 17 is entitled The Threefold Faith. And, um, and so we will read that the next time. Thank you, Kushbu. Nice seeing you today. Okay, so we're... Thank you so much. Okay. See you again soon. Uh, Monday... Ma yeah, peace. Monday... Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll talk again Monday. Thank you. Bye-bye.